like a good old fashioned guard match to start off the day here. Two teams, one old rivalry. Still versus TS7. It's the class of the oldest rivalry in basically League of Legends history. They just have TSM's number. God, I hate losing a CLG. What makes them so easy for you guys? They're just free SM, you know? The left here is What brings out the rivalry is the people around it. Hotshot and Reginald, like they've been bashing heads since forever. I made TSM as the sole purpose of beating CLG, and you know what? It worked. Keep it simple, keep it clean. Whenever we play them, it's free. Free LG. When people say free LG, I don't give a shit. To go to bed tonight thinking I lost to TSM, I don't want that to happen. Hotshot hasn't been sleeping for the last three years, so he's used to it. It's time for CLG's golden age. The excitement here in the studio is worked up to a fever pitch, and the crowd is ready for our next match. And we've called in reinforcements. Sam Kobe Hartman Kanzler is joining us for a special three man broadcaster push this time. Well, hello, friends. Hello. Happy hello. To be here. Good to have you up here, man. Now it's time for a good old fashioned rivalry showdown between Counter Logic Gaming and Team Solo Mid. Obviously, a lot of fans are hyped up for this one, and with good cause, because there are bragging rights, a wager between the team owners, and sole possession of the top spot on the line. Yeah, and there's a reason for all the hype, as you were saying. They've also been showing the most consistently yeah. strong play this split, both these teams. CLG in particular, they play a high-risk, high-reward style, and they have a lot of confidence in their ability that they can outplay the opponent. They've also shown in some of their games that they can claw back from some early game mistakes, but they haven't necessarily shown that they can win under pressure yet. Yeah, I mean, that the game uh, that we just saw from them yesterday is definitely an example of that, but it also showed a couple of cracks which are a little bit worrisome for CLG. You know, TSM, the classic way that they would beat CLG in this rivalry is through a strong laning phase and then transition that into five-on-five -five solid team fights. CLG lost straight up. They got outplayed in the laning phase yep. yesterday, so yep. they're definitely going to have to patch this up. TSM are looking really strong as well. Uh, Bjergsen in the mid lane obviously is their go-to strategy, but Wild Turtle as well, stepping up big for yeah. the team. And uh-oh, <laughs> that's a problem for TSM. If you're not oh there. no! <laughs> <laughs> Both of these teams are arguably fielding the best mid laners currently. Bjergsen not there. Lincoln yeah, Bjergsen are sitting just... number one and two in the league for kills, and each game they have been showing up huge for their teams. Yeah, I mean, even though Bjergsen is a uh, below link in the kill <laughs> uh, scoreboard, <laughs> He there is. He just, is. He's a, such a more. He's a much more scary playmaker. Yeah. Um, and the presence that he has on the map, as Po Belter attested to in his interview, uh, is definitely makes teams change the way that they do play. So uh, we'll have to see here uh, if Link can handle the pressure from Bjergsen. I mean, and just to talk about Link a little bit, he is ahead of Bjergsen in kills, which is a remarkable thing when you mention it to someone like really Link's yeah. ahead of Bjergsen in kills. Right. But this year in particular. Link's taken on a lot more responsibility and a lot more ownership over his own play. I mean, the fact that he had to actually try out to get back in his mid lane on COG. I mean, as Hotshot was even talking about at the start of the day, all these guys on COG have been at the bottom. So they're going to do everything they can point. to not get back there. Yeah, Link is definitely a seasoned guy. The thing is, over the seasons, the main criticism has been high pressure games. Mm -hmm. And this is really the first <laughs> high pressure game of this new golden age CLG that we're going to see Link perform on. So, you know, the question is definitely there. Can he step up in the big game? Yep. Pink hair is on the line. The pressure is even <laughs> feeling from the players now. We hear them saying it. And to add one more cherry on top of this hype Sunday, the winner of this matchup will likely secure an invitation to the Intel Extreme Masters coming up in Katowice, Poland. And that is a big opportunity for teams to get international yeah. experience, which is extremely rare now days. Very valuable, you know, and could uh, work towards that goal of Worlds that both of these teams have their eyes set towards. All right, well, the excitement around this match has reached TSM and CLG loud and clear. And Doublelift says the pressure is on and failure is not an option. Like, honestly, before this de before this weekend, we're like, okay, TSM's coming up. We should probably win, you know. There's, like, some beef between us. And, I and then the community just, like, escalated to the point where it's like, 
Wow, we have to win this game or else we'll get shit talked for the rest of our career. So of course we're gonna try our hardest, but now we have to like try our hardest plus 10 because of the expectations of this match. Like we have to win now. Where before it was like, yeah, we should probably win. Now it's like, we have to win. Such a different double lift. Usually before you'd say, I'm gonna put him in the trash can. And now there's a <laughs> lot of respect here. They know this game. There's a lot on the line as well from their fans and just as a team in general for that feeling. Yeah, and one of the reasons why the community has hyped it up so much is because these are the top two teams right now. <laughs> yeah. All the players from every other North American LCS team always point to these two, you know, who are the best teams yep. right now. It's TSM and CLG in the scrims. These guys yeah. are the ones shadowing the rest. Yeah, and the strange thing is, you know, TSM has been up there for so long, and CLG has just been this underdog again and yeah. again and again. <laughs> that's true. But that's why they keep talking about the golden age yep. of CLG. <laughs> maybe, maybe they found the right formula this time. Scar is coach, <laughs> everyone a little bit seasoned, so they're not going to slack off because they yep. know what it's like. I mean, these guys, Aframu, Link, Doublelift, we're down 0-2 to Curse Academy in the promotion tournament. One game of being knocked out of the LCS last split. So there's a lot that they've been running back from. And I mean, now you're just wondering how high can they go? Yeah. Well, the way that you do start a golden age in civilization, at least, is happiness. And the fans <laughs> have been happy for COG for the entire split. We'll have to see if the extra 20% yeah. production and culture actually will help them out. Of, maybe they get more minions streaming out of the base. We'll yeah. find Only out. Only if they buy the ZZ Rot portal. <laughs> <laughs> we can only find out if we get the match underway. So let's go with a quick roster rundown. On the blue side, it's Counter Logic Gaming. That's Scion Spartan in the top lane, Nick Smithy in the jungle, Lincoln mid, double lifted AD carry, and Aframu on support. And on the red side, it is Team Solo mid, Dyrus in the top lane, Santorin in the jungle, a lot of fans too, Bjergsen making his appearance in mid lane, He's Wild back. Turtle and AD carry, and Lustboy on support. He's back. He just couldn't figure out which way the USB went. So <laughs> He's like, this actually isn't USB, I'm going to need a new one. So the strength for TSM coming out here, like you guys are saying, I feel like is obviously there for Bjergsen. But what we've been seeing for Conlogic Gaming, I think, is teamwork that makes those plays. Mm -hmm. So if that teamwork, I feel like that can surmount one guy's super pro plays right now. But Bjergsen has been coming out big. He is the titan of mid lane right now on top. And we'll see if Link can shut him down. If he doesn't, that's the power Bjergsen has. It spreads to the rest of his lanes. And we really wonder how much this is going to be about picks and bans as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Kobe and I were talking a lot about this. As far as uh, 80 carry picks, they're almost identical. They've pretty much played the exact same 80 carries with one extra game on Caitlyn for double lift and one game on Graves for Wild Turtle. Mm -hmm. Those guys are the same. Where the champion pools differ and where a lot of this game could be decided is in the mid lane champion selector. Yeah. You know, Link has pulled out two Nidalee games. How high is the priority going to be on something like Lissandra or Ari? These picks and bans could be really interesting. Yeah, I mean, I don't feel like you can let either Ari or Nidalee through uh, on these teams. Like, if you give Bjergsen Ari, this is, it's going to be terrible for you. As we've seen, the premier assassin on this, mm -hmm. on this yeah. patch. She's just too good all around. And meanwhile, Nidalee, not only is it a really strong pick for Link, but I don't think CLG can afford to give that up either. Santorin played a lot of jungle Nidalee even before she got the buffs to be able to snare, uh, yeah. you know, neutral camps. Yep. So... Uh, it could be a secret weapon for TSM that they decided to whip out just for CLG. Well, these guys, they spoke about it on the desk earlier, Reginald and Hotshot, that the competition has been since the early days of trying to get rank one. So there's a lot of pressure going into getting those high priority picks to make sure this game is safe and keep their part of the rivalry strong. Team Solo Mid has had quite a good pick and ban phase. Some people have said about CLGs that they're getting a little cocky or could get themselves some picks that aren't actually going to work in their composition with what they try. The thing with CLG and Champion Select is they are more willing than other teams to let some of the power picks through, and they have proven that they've been able to beat them. I mean, the yeah, yeah. Jarvan Nar they can give up on sometimes and doesn't necessarily matter. That was kind of an overhyped uh, synergy of yeah, champions, as we've seen with some results here in the North American LCS. <laughs> Yeah, I think the thing is, CLG give up very specific combos. You know, Cassidy, Link is very confident of uh, playing against yeah. Cassidy, And then they have a, a plan in mind to play against something like that. Take advantage of his lack of wave clear or the Gnar thing working around his bar. But let's jump in and see what the bands start out as everyone is on pins and needles. What yeah. will be the focus? I'm figuring we'll see a Nidalee down here. Maybe some junglers as well. First band to come out is Zareth. So the mid lane... We figured there'd yeah. be a lot of focus on it, and the first band goes to it. They might just 
they might leave Arya and force TSM to ban it. Like, there's a chance COG would just be willing to first pick it. They would And then care. they're they're trying to ban away Bjergsen's backups. It's just, he has such a big champion pool. Already with a top lane ban, though, that was one of the things that I thought might, you know, go through picks and bans between COG and TSM. There's so many viable, really strong top laners now with Rumble, Lissandra, yep. and Nar, and Maokai, all very popular among the teams at the moment. Yeah, and Rumble. I've also seen them share champions, too. The fact that, you know, they both played Scion, they're both Lissandra, I'm sure they can both play Maokai. Yeah. Uh, also, Morgan is another shared champion amongst these guys. It's the most played champion for both Lustboy and Aphromoo. It makes TSM's bans, to me, a little bit strange. Well, I think they're really just going with what they've seen have a really big impact for CLG. Zion Spartan, the game that sticks out in your mind is their dive on Zion Spartan. He's on this rumble. He turns around, gets the double kill. Mm -hmm. Aphromoo on the bindings. Everybody has had that imprinted on their mind. And then Link with Nidalee. So TSM's bans, to me, are just, these are probably they're not targeted at anybody specifically, obviously, but they're just the biggest playmakers that stand out when you think yep. of the CLG team this season. And I totally agree with that. But... <laughs> <laughs> Lissandra <laughs> da, da, da. is the 100% win rate champ. <laughs> yeah, yes. in North America thus far. <laughs> On top of that, Lissandra's really good against Ari. Yeah, the lockdown. She tries to dash in. No. Lissandra can just stop her dead in her tracks. Although, let's see if Bjergsen can work around that. That's... Some Power picks on both sides, obviously, because they target ban pretty heavily here. Yeah, and it is all about, you know, whoever gets the first CC to land in that matchup, too. True. Ari from, if you control Vision well enough, can do the exact same thing to Lissandra. I was actually thinking more Zion Spartan's going to top lane that, uh -huh. and it's the team fight counter more so. But yeah, if, if Ari's played well and you get the charm on Lissandra, it doesn't matter. We've seen so many of them, you know, get locked down and not be able to get off any of those invulnerabilities. Yep. We saw Lissandra last game paired with a Vi. Something McSmithy has put his hands on. And we'll see if he does it once again. That combination was pretty deadly. And it gives them opportunities for picks. Something CLG loves. Something Afromu can be a huge proponent of if the rest of the team can't. And Afromu has been making some plays. He even drew a ban on here. Yeah. The other thing about, you know, Lissandra Vi combo, it's very easy to execute. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is have everyone on the same page before the team fight starts. They pick a target, and the target doesn't get to do anything. <laughs> Nothing at all. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Some speed possibly to come in here for Wild Turtle. Bjergsen already has his Ari, so you were talking about that Scion and the Lissandra Jad. It's going to be a Scion and Lissandra. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, the thing about um, picking up Sivir here, I really like that for Wild Turtle. You want as many spell shields as you can when you're facing Vi. And when you're facing Vi and Lissandra, uh, it's pretty much the most defensive <laughs> AD carry to go with here. Even though she doesn't have a dash, dashes don't save you versus those two. Nope, not at all. We saw that last game. Flash is being blown and still the connect happening in the engage. So TSM's composition pretty much sits on the field now. They have a support to grab. So it looks like yeah. they wanted to get all their lanes. I mean, first. CLG might try and do a double AD here, says they do have the Sandra potential in the top lane, but against a Scion, it's so easy to stack armor, it might be really dangerous. They, they, they completely decide their composition with these last two picks and the style they want to play. Yeah, and especially with Sivir getting taken away, I'm always really scared. Even though they do have Jennifer, you know, the peel and the extra speed. Lissandra mid. Lissandra yep. mid, Corky for a bit of the AP as well. And we have a Nar for the top lane, actually, for Zion Spartan to come in this game. So, Corky pick after Sivir. I think there is a high chance of a lane swap for CLG, especially because they do have Nar, who can, has that range form mm -hmm. and can utilize it as well. Uh, interesting level one expected. Not only possibility of lane swap here, but also Scion on one team always makes things that much more interesting. Oh, man. Hey, Mata said Nar support was one of the best, right? <laughs> it could happen, man. He did. Bring it on. He did say that. <laughs> the truth is under question. <laughs> And he could be locked in here. Actually, didn't even notice the little one made her way through bands here mm -hmm. against Team Solomid and Chronologic Gaming in this one. And it might just be locked in by Lost Boy. Yeah, I mean, the most interesting thing about this is Lost Boy's actually only played three supports. He's played Janna and Morgana almost exclusively because they themselves banned Morg, right. COG to Janna. The Annie makes sense both from a comfort perspective and from a team comp perspective needing to just go in. I mean... There's a lot of people online that are worried with all the hype around this game. It's going to be the longest, slowest, lowest kill TSM CLG game in history. <laughs> with all the hype? That's unlikely with these team compositions yeah. because there's not 
much disengage outside of the Janna and a lot of engage. There's definitely a lot here, especially for TSM locking in that Annie for Lust Boy. Now, the thing that is only a little bit curious to me, I really thought that CLG were going to go with a Kalista late pick since they took Vi and Lissandra so early. Mm. Uh, and Doublelift is a huge fan of that champion. But going with the Corky instead, uh, adding that mid-game power spike, really want to work off the Trinity Force because that's where a lot of the plays are being made on the current state of the game. Very interesting pickup. Does anything on TSM side, Kobe, tell you why that Kalista may not have been picked up on the side of CLG? I like her working around Sion as the as the front tank, and I also like her against Jarvan. So the only thing I don't like is against Ari because okay. you're dashing away with your auto attacks, and Ari is basically <laughs> taking all your health, dashing again and again. Yeah, yeah. Logo Scar. Second time's <laughs> a charm. Now is your chance to tell us who's going to win. But for this match, we're going to do something a little special. If you think CLG is going to win, tweet at LOL Esports and use the hashtag Golden Age. Or if you're predicting TSM will come out on top, sending, use the hashtag TSM, TSM, TSM. It will be counting your votes throughout the game. It's up to you to make those votes. You can vote as many times as you want, and obviously it's going to be going back and forth throughout the whole game, just like the game itself, and we're about to get onto the rift. It is that time, ladies and gentlemen. Counter Logic Gaming versus Team Solo Mid. We're on the rift. Yes, Woo. we are. It's almost an incomp, you know, Incoherent mess of words there with COG and TSM <laughs> chance. I love it when they the merge, time. actually. The, <laughs> yeah. the CLM. CLM. <laughs> So lane swapping is something right. that we need to be keeping an eye on, or even who makes it in for the early wards. Because if you're planning a lane swap, you also want to be able to get some deep wards, which if teams pick the wrong paths, they can collide with each other. All right, so early move up top there. Les Boy does drop his trinket ward extremely early. Everyone grouping up on the red side, hoping for a CLG, which is interesting because... If he gets his ward down in time. Yeah, you don't usually see the uh, blue side invading that red jungle. So TSM going to make the power move in to get those deep wards. Got to lay them all the way through here to see who's going to get into the lane. Nars already between them, though. Yes, yeah, so they... They're going to get those deep wards down, but they're spotted deep wards. I mean, when both teams have these in these spots, it, it almost becomes a guessing game. I mean, at this point, they saw Sivir place the ward bottom lane, so they're expecting Sivir to be top lane. They saw Sivir place the ward on the bottom side of the map, so they're expecting Sivir to be top right. lane. Now, CLG, if they do decide to match, they have to walk through the wards, which would give TSM a chance to swap back again. Yeah, Turtle's already starting off his recall as they do get that information. All right, so it looks like they walk it out. They may actually get the matchup that they want here and we're going to see the start in the jungle from both supports as well as the top laners just gonna look, go about this a little weird yeah. but help from the supports so there's Darius, the classic scion start mm -hmm. start on one of the camps either wolves or rays wolves are generally safer uh, but a lot of teams have been placing that ward and they've been alerted to the presence of the top laner taking those wolves Darius, though no supports come to harass him while he takes it that lane swap was strange to me, only because Doublelift saw... No, uh, ne never mind. I'm, <laughs> yeah, it was actually totally fine. It was strange until now. Yeah, it was strange until I figured it out. All right, well, definitely want to keep my eyes on the supports. Les Boy does have his uh, stun charged up, and they are oh. the basically them as well as with the junglers, the biggest playmakers uh, at this stage in the game. Interesting choice for Les Boy to go back really early here. See if he can grab maybe one more ward to place. Yep, that's exactly Two what more. he's getting. So TSM wants a lot of the early game vision. We know Lost Boy to be one of those very big roaming supports to help TSM get the early game that they need and pressure any of the advantages they can. Santorin, we know him to be very supporty for the team. He's actually been able to make a few plays for himself over the weeks and really show true strength with Team Solo Mid and his fellow Dane in the mid lane. So, on the, as far as the lane swap goes, we are seeing our first divergence here. CLG have opted for a quick push, uh, double lift not freezing the lane, you know, stacking up and pushing with that first cannon minion. And, whereas TSM opted for Wild Turtle to keep the lane uh, towards the middle of the lane. Nar, though, didn't have a problem CSing as we went over the range for him. 
Zion Spartan going to get out of there because he doesn't want to be the recipient of a dive as they change gears. And this is more of the lane swap that, that TSM wants, I think, only because of the Scion. Scion is so good in these 1v2s. He is a brick that he can be up there against mm -hmm. to support and an AD carry. Zion Spartan, though, because he was able to hit level 3, should be okay. The little gimmick that Lust Boy tried in mid lane not paying off makes it harder for them to punish here with any type of dive. And it could give us some more farm-heavy lanes. Yeah, comes back with the extra health crystal. Makes the dive that Ooh. much harder. Comes out of lane before being able to be a tank. Dyrus may go down. He's forced to really stay back on this. Even with that ward in the brush, he's trying to get up for Roar, the Slayer, CSing. Yeah, Double did a good thing. Bouncing the, uh, the minion wave off of the turret. So even though he shoved it very quickly early, now Dyrus in a really tough situation, trying to grab some of that CS, only being able to use his Roar, or taking a large amount of damage. 26 to 27 here in the mid lane. Link is actually trying to bait this one in and have Bjergsen kind of go hard at just in that little cove of mid lane. The charm hits. But Nick Smithy, very patient on this one. Two members coming around the outside, however. Here comes Santorin and Lust Boy. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be a party in the mid lane. COG was trying to beat TSM to the punch there. Yeah. Uh, but Bjergsen, because of the way the wave was positioned, was getting there safe. Outsmarted ward position there by COG, having the ward not where the pink is, and actually results in TSM wasting a lot of time there. Yeah, and you can also see the difference uh, in supports too. Jungler backed up by an Annie support, so much more dangerous. Even though Bjergsen had to deal with that giant wave pushing against him, COG also having that brush advantage didn't want to take it. Stun from Annie early on, yeah. game changing. Yeah, on the flip side though, with Annie roaming around, uh, it, ama it, it amasses to Zion Spartan getting much more CS in that lane because he's in a 1v1 against Sivir, whereas Dyrus is in a 2v1 uh, on Scion versus the Corky Janna. And that is paying off in top lane CS for Zion Spartan. I'm expecting him to be big as well after that. We've seen him take hits in the early game and be down quite far. Still be a solid rock for the team. It's something CLG picked up when they got Zion Spartan, and it's worked out very well for them. Yeah, something else working out for uh, Zion Spartan is the change to health crystals where you can upgrade them straight up into a giant spell. So that's taking nice. frequent trips back, but every time he backs, he upgrades his defense stats in a small manner. So it makes it harder and harder to pull off a dive. Oh, it could be first blood for double lift. A few more shots. They're under the turret, and he does get the kill, but it's going to be Afromu that secures it with the auto. Man, that was really... Solid play by both Doublelift and Aphromoo there. Knowing that they were going to go for the dive and Aphromoo preemptively taking the turret shots so that Doublelift mm -hmm. can place down the damage. They did burn a lot of summoners for that, but getting the kill would have been nice to get on a Doublelift. Still worth it, though. Here comes Smithy. Going to try and answer. Does have the Raptor buff, so he knows there's no ward. But uh, Lust Boy just holds on to his stun charge, so... Especially when you're facing a level 6 Sivir, really difficult to make much happen in that bottom lane. And he goes straight back to farming. So, see if there's any pressure on Santorin to make some moves now. Knowing something already happened in the top lane. Double lift getting a kill on his first Corky play of the season. So he's going to be able to play real strong with that one. Good clear by X Smithy on the pick. Something I have to note, I was looking at the wards killed stat that we have. And X Smithy has killed 14 more wards than any other jungler in the NALCS. By far the best vision denial of any jungler. The next closest was Santorin, 40 behind him. X Smithy's killed 111, and I believe Santorin has killed 71. Uh, so the two best junglers at vision denial, but X Smithy, the ward killing mass. And I think a lot of that does come from uh, what jungler you're playing because a lot of the junglers that go with the uh, Trailblazer smite Raptor buff pretty much on cooldown. Yep. So they get really high ward clearing numbers. Whereas people who go with the, you know, the Lee Sins or the Jarvins and get the sl extra slow from Stalkers, a uh, bit lower on that score. Zion, though, with that Gnar uh, in the lane swap, was able to use the range very effectively, and he'll yep. take his CS lead into the 1 versus 1 with Dyrus now. 
Nah, having too much there. trouble. Oh. There's the stun. Gonna be the Nar into the wall. He actually flips him back. Oh, didn't get the Nar stun in the wall. Zion has the ult. Yeah, he just missed it off the edge. Nice try, though. Aggression from Zion gets control of the lane. Looking good for CLG so far. Eight minutes in. Double lift with that kill as they swap back to the bottom lane. Now have a bit of power against Wild Turtle and Lustboy, but still have to be afraid of the level six. Not too soon, though. Lust Boy is actually only level three from this early game roam, so things could go wrong down here. First thing, too, we see some early vision from CLG starting to move that vision ward, uh, vision line up in the blue side jungle. Man, Dyrus, so aggressive. Oh, if he just stood in front of him. <laughs> then he would have been stunned to the turret, <laughs> but it may have gotten him. Uh, to talk a little bit more about this, when TSM has beaten CLG historically, it's been laning phase. Right. Oh, actually, that's a fight. That goes out of Bjergsen. They're able to lock him down. This is what CLG has done throughout this split, is find single picks around the map. Bjergsen just gets out with his ultimate there. And that's that vision I was just talking about. Mm -hmm. CLG placed this first preliminary line inside the blue side jungle. They use it. They don't kill Bjergsen, but they took him so low and took out the Spirit Rush that they still have control. Wild Turtle gets himself into a sticky Ooh. situation there. Ultimate to get out. Now that's two ults used in defense by Team Solo Mid while trying to protect their own jungle. Bjergsen very low. Could be making a risky decision to come in here. The team is, however, no. Backing from the yeah. fight. That teleport from Zion called everything off for Link, TSM. Link was blown up, yet CLG still pushed in on that one mm -hmm. because of the teleport coming in from Zion Spartan. That could be the dragon, but it's going to get Dyrus back in the game a little bit. He really needed that, too. I mean, Dyrus had to use his teleport constantly to get back to lane because of the well-played way that CLG handled the early lane swap, uh, utilizing Gnar and uh, Lust Boy going for more roaming uh, influence on Annie rather than two versus one. Yeah, and I have to get back to the point before all the action happened of TSM historically beating CLG when they can outlane them. But in this split in particular, CLG has been laning better than TSM. The CS differential at 10 across the board from CLG is higher than that of TSM. Wild Turtle in particular hasn't really differentiated themselves from an opponent 80 carries, no. and we're kind of seeing it again here in a couple of the lanes, bottom lane and top lane. Uh, the only thing that is not holding true, and the TSM is doing this game, is Bjergsen winning that mid lane, 98 CS already. Yeah, back to that mid lane once again for TSM. Less Boy and Santorin coming to Supplement the vision for Bjergsen. Spear rush back up. They're gonna have to look to their star mid laner. Gotta make plays. We've seen Bjergsen by now has solo kills in his lane. That hasn't occurred this time, so he's still looking to get going. That doesn't mean he's not gonna get a triple kill coming up in this next fight. Looking to go for the Morello Namakon in his build. He might actually have the beans coming out with the build so far for Link. He's gotta make sure to get a little bit of magic resist. Mm -hmm. Just because of the all-in threat. Too much from explosion. Mm -hmm. So the wards pushed up now for TSM, showing Pink's a little head of where they can defend them, but that means they're feeling good about the pressure they have, as well as a few forward wards down behind that dragon. Right now, it's all about focus as we launch Nard out, Zion Spartan. Go ahead and ward. Won't be too much fight against Dyrus in this top lane, but like we said, he was able to just get back somewhat, match the CS of Zion Spartan here, so things might go a little bit better for him. We are slowly approaching that point for Trinity Force double lift, though. CLG moving in one more piece for him, and they can actually bring that Corky's power over to the mid lane and try and push in here to make use of these rockets. An incredibly close fan vote, too. Here. <laughs> and a close Six game. Fans holding back. 200 yeah. gold separates these two. And TSM has actually been a team to forego early dragon on multiple occasions. Yep. They don't really care that much about it because they want to get the farm on their team, maybe get turrets, and then take the map with vision control. This time, though, COG was able to take the dragon without really giving up much. Yes, uh, Link did die in the blue side jungle, and they gave Dyrus a little bit of farm, but it was no turrets and no huge amount of farm to uh, an individual. Doesn't want to fully go on the fight. Doesn't have 
all the vision he needs. But now seeing Zion Spartan gnaw out with that aggression, they are going to try to use this to their advantage. As soon as it wears off, he is going to be cooked and served up. Baby Nar. Santorin waiting for the flag and drag. The baby Nar indeed. It's adorable, but he still goes down. And look, the vision was completely starved out on that side of the map for CLG. Yeah, but CLG, they placed all their vision on the bottom side. Now they're shoving the turret as well. Wild Turtle just has to back off. Yeah. So two turrets of pressure, two lanes of pressure gained for CLG. They are actually going to get ahead in the objective trade, even though they gave up the kill with the big move top for TSM. Well, that's the thing, though. TSM did hold off that mid lane turret. It could just end up being a turret trade with the kill unless they make a return trip to that mid lane. I'd say TSM barely ahead on that one. Both teams recognizing they have to adapt to those rotations. CLG getting themselves to the top lane not quick enough, or rather to the mid lane to take down the turret. They do lose Zion Spartan. So TSM is making their plays and trying to grab more advantages. Now through kills, two to one. Still behind in gold just a little bit. All right, so much ward coverage here from CLG on the bottom side, though. Uh, you can see why they're hovering around this bottom side and taking most of their fights around here because they don't want anyone to get picked off by Bjergsen. Really, the threat from TSM here is somebody gets caught out of position. Not only do you have Spirit Rush, but you have Sivir boosted team to pick off anybody else after the initial uh, catch. And it's even more of a dangerous game because Lissandra plus Vi is so threatening. They're going to try and get him. That's the flash. Spirit Rush is down for him. Not going to be able to follow up with that distance. Maybe if the Smith was there. Bjergsen still trying to go hard in that mid lane and force out Link. Those guys actually back and forth, 121 to 132, and fighting quite well together. Oh, oh that turret. Turn trip. Oh. oh, is it? One shot in the turret. Double lift wasn't really helping Xmithy, and he got himself a little too far in, but it doesn't look like they want to stop here. CLG may lose the edge in these fights, but they still feel confident to stand tall. Everything these wow. guys are doing is being countered by the other team in some way, shape, or form. CLG trying to get that last turn on the turret. TSM knew that that was going to happen and nearly surprised them. There's been so many near kills so far in this game. And as these guys build more and more damage, we're going to start seeing a very explosive yeah. match. Damn yeah. it, a pickaxe on Gnar for Zion Sparring. Definitely a different type of bias. I guess he's going for Frozen Mallet. Yeah, he would First be. First item. You should like it. It would work. There's a lot of speed to be countered coming up onto Team Solo Mid. Counter-Logic Gaming moving back into mid themselves here as they need to get wards up onto Dragon. Yeah, the vision battle is really what we're keeping our eyes on here because both of these teams have so much potential to burst someone down and, and lock someone down. Uh, anybody who, st whichever team starts winning the vision battle. Well, I feel uh, like it's going to be CLG a lot of now pressure. with double sight stone. Having that out on Smithy as well. They've been forcing wards in. The other thing to watch as people hit that level 9 is the upgrade for their trinkets as well. Double Lift actually upgraded to the pink dropper for his yellow trinket. So he can actually move wow. those around. Very rare, actually, upgrade for that one. Yeah, but in this situation, it's almost like a permanent sweeper. This is about, like zone control more than temporarily temporary control of spots and that's shown right here they're completely have just a smithy on it right the rest of the team is just kind of playing man defense in mid and clg pick up dragon number two yeah this is that situation where one team winning the vision battle they have the fog of war advantage so yeah. dangerous to face check yeah and now the only thing tsm can try and do is run straight up a lane or continue farming this is Really interesting, with Bjergsen cut off from the team, I don't know if TSM can stay mid. They have to respect the collapse they, here. They do have Sivir. They would rather hold on to that cooldown, uh, but it can be used uh, to make just a quick push, try and shove down a turret, and then run out of there. However, not everybody on the same page. You can see yeah. half of them shoved up to the turret, half of them wanted to already bail, and they do not answer the dragon from CLG. Double it, playing with fire here. Steps away from Dyrus there. They get out safely. The charm just Ooh. missing. So they know they have a little room to work around Bjergsen. But he leaves lane. They don't have any potential there. They want to be able to stop this. Xmithy taking a little too much here. Greed may get the better of him, but it looks like he could get out safe. I mean, it's so rare you see Sightstone on Vi, but that's really what this game is about. Right. Santorin's going to also have to delay his item builds because he has to buy so many green wards with this vision battle. The only smites we're seeing from the Rangers Trailblazers on both sides are for vision buffs. They're either smiting the little wolf to scout their jungle, or the raptors to get the yeah, orc. Yeah, on cooldown, pretty much. Yep. Oh, 
Ooh, Dyrus getting hit here. TSM not collapsing. CLG have vision of that in the mid lane, and they're able Move to just it. wipe out Dyrus. The dinner bell goes off, and he just runs back Again, home. Again, you can see not quite ready to fully commit to that one. <laughs> Smithy with a half second hesitation there, uh, but Link making the call to go all in. That is the two giant uh, single target CC cooldowns. Yeah. Blown for CLG, though, so they have to pull back. And on the tankiest person on TSM, too. Yeah. A little bit of hesitation. Yet another really near miss. There's definitely a lot of pressure on this game, and you're seeing maybe that split second of hesitancy with the way they're executing here, especially for, for CLG needing to kind of overtake TSM here to do all their fans justice for being fans for so long. Yeah. Oh. And you do see a little bit slower game, too, when there's so much pressure put on them. Zion does get stunned out, and he did go for that Frozen Pallet early on yeah. Yar. It'll be interesting to see what happens when they start getting these long fights in, and they just continuously use that Frozen Mallet to keep TSM where they want. TSM kind of floundering around the map here, finding a bit of what they want, but still pushed off of this mid turret wave after wave. It'll happen eventually, but CLG is just gaining more. And both teams are giving a lot of respect to the engaged potential of each other. That's why they're keeping this pretty large spacing between one another. And the only reason TSM is doing this push is because they knew X Smithy's Assault and Battery was down and Link's Lissandra ultimate was down gives a window that TSM can punish and even the goal for the game yet again. Yeah, those are the big cooldowns that they want to keep track of. As well, they're always watching the Rage Bar here from Zion Spartan. Zion, though, uh, not able to push up to the turret. Dyrus getting the bottom one without answer, and he does have teleport. Already, the TSM, you can see they're sending reinforcements to top as they saw that wave building up. Wild Turtle, put a Brutalizer in his Sivir build. It's actually yeah. relatively common. Yeah. You you have a lot of spell damage on Sivir, as well as Ghostblade helping the mobility more late game. But early game, that combination with BF Sword Brutalizer is a large, large amount of damage. Nice spike there for him. We do see the Trinity Force has been finished for some time on double lift and his support. Aphromu picking up that Mage Eyes. You know, the game's gonna be a little bit more bloody as we continue on. CLG still trying to dictate as much as they can. Retreating would put them in a full line of wards for TSM, but if you look now on TSM's side, they don't have any vision of CLG, so this is where it gets scary. They're gonna have to be very careful of how they approach any of this dark fog of war. Yeah, the top one, that last outer turret standing. You can see even, even Dyrus on Scion taking the long way around. Doesn't want to get ambushed. They pretty much, they're consistently pinging out every single person that shows up on the mini-map too, trying to keep tabs of everybody on the map. Just to figure out where that uh, three versus one is going to come from. Dyrus a little bit slow though. Bringing even more backup this time. Oh jeez. <laughs> Aphromoo taking the turret once again. He remembers what this is like. And it's just going to take a few more shots. They nicely, again, dive top turret to find a kill on and, Dyrus. And once again, it's CLG prepping the area that they're going to fight in with tons of vision. Yeah, All these wards well dropped on the top side. They swing everybody up there through the true side that they know they have pink yeah. wards already laid down. And they blocked the ultimate on Sion that time to avoid his retreat. A another attempt yeah. at killing Dyrus that, that was successful here. TSM needed to make a move to counter that, but they were caught sleeping there. They were all kind of recalling in base, not having the waves where they wanted them, and they'd already taken that middle turret, so it was much more dangerous for them to make anything happen. Now we're at three turrets to three, which is the mark of a very even game. Well, let's see who can sway it first. A bit of it is swayed by double lifts CS, and then equaled by Bjergsen as he is also beating his lane. That was actually the top two CSers of the North American LCS right now, with double lift being number one. So why not CLG versus TSM? It's fitting. 30 seconds on the dragon. Dyrus teleport is up. He didn't have to get back to lane with that, so they could attempt something here, but it would be very scary. CLG has had a lockdown on these fights, and they may lock down Bjergsen once more. The charm oh. stops the ball breaker. That won't stop the assault and battery, but they choose not to. Bjergsen's ultimate being down is really critical here. CLG can continue the dragon pressure, and if they get number three, that starts forcing TSM to respect the five dragons. It's really that third one that will start the race if CLG can complete that. With no Ari ultimate, I wonder if TSM just has to concede this. Time and time again, we see Bjergsen using his ult in defense, and Wild Turtle doing it as well. This is third dragon, though. They really don't want to give up the speed. Dyrus does have his teleport. Looks like uh, TSM trying to gain position here. 
Look at the flank from Lissandra, though. He yeah. could come in right behind TSM. It's because of Lissandra's positioning here by Link that I think TSM did not go in there. Having no set on Lissandra made it far too dangerous to that go That and Meganar. Oh, Lost Boy just on the edge. Zion Spartan Another trying one. to bring down the house. Hits him with the toss. He's going to take a bit of damage on this. Lost Boy is forced to flash that time. And it looks like Counter Logic Gaming is going to try to actually react to set up Keep defense the on the top turret. Great job by TSM to go tops or mid to top here and get something out of losing that dragon. Now, the early dragons, pretty everybody's on the same page. The people are fine with giving those up for turrets. Okay. But as you get to this point in the game, the third one, it's, you start to worry a bit, especially yeah. when speed is so important in this matchup. Yeah. Well, it was the amount of three dragons that TSM, oh man, going in. CLG, don't know if they fully wanted that one. Xmithy got blown up immediately. And Double Lift is kind of hanging on the backside, missing a rocket there. Link almost getting out of this oh, with a boomerang just on the edge. Charge. He does. Double Lift way too close to the fight. TSM turns back hard. Is Zion Spartan big enough to carry the entire team the rest of the way through? He misses the boulder toss. Wild Turtle is all out of speed ups, all out of steroids. Zion Spartan on cooldown for the throw, but he should have it back up in time. The spell shield oh. comes out, but Turtle's still going to fight valiantly for one more kill. He can't get it. And CLG come up big on the fight. And the fight just kind of appeared out of nowhere. They ran into each other, I think, in a lapse of vision control. After so much planning, they just clash. And boy, was it a close fight with CLG barely coming out ahead, as they have in most engagements thus far. Such a crazy fight. Beautifully and, done. Yeah, and all that TSM, you know, Bjergsen and Dyrus peeling off from that very early. All that they got. Oh! He has all. Ooh! Just a split second away. All that they got done was one ward there. See that again. Look at that. Inside jungle. Ships yeah. in the night. So maybe Smithy thought Dyrus was there, but everyone else on TSM was beside the, behind the wall, and X Smithy gets instantly blown up there. And then the zoning here from Link. Aphromoo comes in to save him right when Great he comes out of his hold. own ultimate and barely saves him. This would easily be the turning point. That was pretty much single-digit HP right there. Yep. Even with double it on the Just front line. Meganar, he jumps over, oh. over calculates a little bit, then has to flash backwards for the ultimate. But he splits the entire team. All three members surviving of TSM ha are forced in opposite directions. Well, the biggest thing about the end of that fight is a lot of teams have gotten really good at playing around Nar's Rage Bar. But because that fight happened so unexpectedly, yeah. nobody could keep track of it. And Zion, it, with all the nice plays that CLG made, shields on Link, a heal from double to keep him alive, it was that Nar ultimate coming up at that time that really turned it from Zion's part. Well, and the frozen mallet, Nar. <laughs> yeah, that looks pretty annoying. We'll get the shield from the inner turret. Doesn't have to ult out of this. That CLG is going to use everything they have along with this wave to try and topple this bottom turret and make their way onto the base of Team Solo mid if they can. Pushed off once more as TSM obviously able to rotate a little bit easier now that the inner turrets are closer to each other, but CLG is still giving them a lot to think about. They finally have just over a thousand gold lead, the biggest one we've seen in the game. Let's see if they can stretch that a little bit more. It's now up to Team Solo mid to start making plays. It's really the first time, other than their loss to Team 8, we've seen them on the back foot here. Yeah, big item threshold is on the horizon for CLG as Link already has the biggest component of his Zanya's purchased. Once he gets his second invulnerability, much, much more control of the battlefield. So looking at the early game, could you reflect on it and say TSM actually came out of lanes winning with what they were going into this game looking for? I wouldn't actually say that. I feel like CLG won the lane, sw lane swap game because of the bottom lane and top lane both having advantages. Uh, the only thing was Bjergsen was able to outfarm, but that wasn't necessarily from uh, the early game. That was just Bjergsen being already Bjergsen. Yeah, and I want to touch on something again. We I keep on checking in on this vision war because the gold is so close pretty much this entire game. Mm -hmm. Really the most telling thing is that CLG constantly have this deeper line of vision in TSM's jungle. And it's also, look at how deep the pink wards make it into the opponent's jungle. Because a lot of people can make a rogue mission, get a normal ward in there. Mm -hmm. But it's the pink wards that are the easier to clear ones and really show who feels safe going where. And if CLG has pink wards consistently on the side of TSM, it means TSM is not feeling safe. Not at all. They have not 
been able to really approach these pink wards. The first half of their jungle has been owned by Counter Logic Gaming for the past five minutes. And for some reason today, mid lane has just been seeing a lot of fights. This is like a battle royale area. And with one minute on to Dragon, he's being a help to that situation. Bjergsen with blue, not being denied that this game. So the play is possibly still made for him if they can get this fight to go in their favor. But not a regular game from him either at 0-0-3. Zero, zero yeah, Bjergsen was, hasn't been able to make those charms connect. So many we've seen just grazed yeah. right by double lift, uh, which could have been big plays. But really, once again, it's CLG. They Oh! Big play! Oh, they charmed him! Oh, it wasn't double it, but it was Aframu that time, Kobe. Link's there by himself. The teleport's coming in on both sides, and we're gonna get some more fight going on here. Wild Turtle's gonna get popped. It's back and forth now as they start trading retribution kills for each other. That's Lush Boy going down, but he did get Tibbers out, so he was able to help with the DPS. They start to back off of the fight, and it's a three for two. And Tibbers, even PSM. with the catch onto Aframu, it's still a close fight afterwards. That's two fights in Always. a row now where someone from COG has died immediately at the start. This time was a little bit more important with no monsoon to clear away and the dragon is live. That's the critical thing here. TSM though not confident to go in since double lift is such high health. That's really really worrisome for TSM because CLG have stacked up their dragons so oh, quickly. Dragon. They have been taking those on cooldown. Three already. Number four would put that extra pressure of CLG, and with their vision control and a fourth dragon, they would easily be able to draw TSM into the fog of war. So they really don't want to give this one up. Dyrus trying to keep yeah. them off of it. They're Dyrus, such explosive yeah. fights too. Dyrus though, he can't do much but try and delay damage onto him instead of the dragon. This is going to be close. The fight is approaching. Even if they get the dragon, oh, I think we see a fight. Dyrus doing his damnedest to pull them off of it. The dragon does go over. Number four to counter logic gaining, but is the fight something TSM can capitalize? Hopped over the wall, and they're left waiting with nothing. Ooh, that puts TSM handed. on notice. It is so difficult for TSM now. All of the things that do not show up in the gold charts, the dragons, the vision, Everything going against TSM here. They really need to get a good pick. It shows how much has changed between these two teams. But CLG is the one with four dragons yeah. coming into this one. Frozen Mallet, though. There's no escape without burning ults or flashes. This is what he was looking for with that buy. That's the ult again used defensively by Bjergsen. The other thing that's not showing up in the gold is the 15 stack Medjai Afro Mu on Janet. Yeah. Slowly creeping up without anyone noticing. 15 well, pages in the book. It's five, so that's no! what <laughs> He had right, 10, and then he died. <laughs> but yeah. it will creep if they win another fight. <laughs> hey, they get the dragon. Like you said, Jat, the fifth dragon looms over the head of Team Solo mid. They are now... It's the Vision War, too. Uh-oh. What is a bold play. They already have four dragons. Right, right into the Baron. Counter Logic Gaming putting their foot down here in a pedal to the metal at 31 minutes. They look to take Baron completely uncontested as they have their dragons. And TSM, again, left coming up a little short. One step faster by CLG. And it's TSM mm -hmm. that has the Sivir to make everyone run faster. So it's not been their game quite. No. They need to try and get some type of turret push going, but without vision control, and because they have to respect that Lissandra initiation, and because Zion Spartan's NAR has been pushing people around, they're just getting all the important things and close team fights. We talked a lot about what would happen in the mid lane. While Bjergsen is getting going, CLG and their teamwork really coming up on top of this one. Able to control the map, do what they need to do, and push the wards forward while guarding them at the same time to keep the advantages. Here already inside TSM's jungle, ready to take more. They have no worries about these waves to be pushed. Mid's already there, and now looking for bottom with the map objective free of Baron and Dragon down. Yep, outer turrets next on the menu, definitely here for CLG. Baron Empowered Recalls allowed Double Lift to get back and finish up a quick silver sash for himself, too. So even if the charm lands now on the AD carry, Double Lift has answers. And the dynamic of the game really changes with Baron buffing four dragons on COG. It's no longer a close battle of wits here. It's TSM playing from behind and hoping for a really favorable fight. It's now more important than ever that Bjergsen gets the right kind of charm or that they can at stop Lissandra from doing Lissandra things. If he can actually get <laughs> Link's Lissandra with the Mikhail's not quite being done on Aphromoo yet, that would be the way TSM can make it back into this one. 
He is just one item off of that Mikhail's recipe, so this fight's going to be done without. Oh, the boy. turret going down. Thought we might see a smithy go a little bit harder than that, but he stops after the vault breaker. We do actually have Zion Spartan down here. I was looking for him in another lane, but they won't need to tend to top just yet. And Double Lift feeling very safe to stay on the front line here. He's done so all game. Hasn't really gotten caught out for it. Yeah, I think this is, once again is a this is a great example of how CLG with their strategy coming into the game. They have everybody in alignment. It's so easy for all these guys yeah. uh, to prep for this game since there was so much pressure. Everybody was looking towards this one, but they're they're all on. Uh, the same page here. They have the tools to deal with Bjergsen, even if he did get fed. They focus very early on in their picks, mm -hmm. Vi and Lissandra, because they know that there is this one person on TSM that is that can take over a game. Yeah. So they even had uh, backup plans if Bjergsen on the mid lane did get out of control. And right now, it's so hard for him on Ari to make that play, the game-winning play, you know, to try and get them back in this game, the thing you're talking about, locking down Lissandra or something. Yep. It's so dangerous for him to go with those. Right, like chat said, you know, leave him up with the Ari, but it can be locked down with the Sandra. That's what bjergsen has been dealing with, still trying to make plays. He does have the Rapidons, a Void Staff now as well, so he can start to get through a little bit of that resistance that Link has put up. And now one minute and 30 seconds until the all-important fifth dragon Very would important. respawn for COD if they can get this. But for once, they don't have impeccable vision control yeah. here at the dragon. They do have the deep wards for TSM's jungle, but not the forward wards. And this could end up having to be the fight. He's got someone with the mallet. We're going to see something. This is great time for Bjergsen. Barton on the Gnar. Bjergsen gets to do nothing this fight. 45 seconds on his death timer. Wild Turtle uses his ult to get out of the fight as well. That's going to be one more shot. Double lift takes aim. He fires. The spell shield catches. That one's going to miss. This will go on. He finds the third one. It's a charm. And they are going to be moving on. Three down for Team Solo mid. They had nothing to say about that fight. Link's already got control of the mid wave, and they're going to push straight up towards that inhibitor turret. Let's see if Double If can get there in time. That was a long chase on Turtle. Yeah, but, but he now should arrive. The wave clear is pretty much pushed back. Dyrus wasn't even there. He had to, I think he canceled his teleport because the fight went so, so wrong. Wow. Literally, TSM caught sleeping there. Well, they just got caught by Nar. The, the Frozen Mallet Nar has caught them in so many strange situations that forced their hand, and Bjergsen was not willing to burn his Spirit Rush in an escape capacity. Cost him his life. Little did we know that Frozen Mallet would play such a big role, being the first item built up here from Zion Spartan. Not the first time we've seen it, but definitely the first time we've seen it being so effective. And Counter Logic Gaming now knows their power, and they're not afraid to push the advantages. It does create a dragon fight Number that we get five. to see again, though, because everyone will be alive for it. It's just TSM is filtering in, not quite in sync because of all the deaths. Speed trying, dragon trying, kills advantage. Oh, Let's no. see if COG can pull this off. One by one, less alts than last time. Zion Spartan again in Meganar form. He's going to be able to do a bit of zoning, and the poke from Double Lift has already started to put TSM down. That Link ultimate the best just ultimate. off the edge. This could be the comeback here for Team Solo mid. The ult goes in. That's on to Santorin. He's pretty tanky from the Vi Assault and Battery, so he stays alive. They continue to fight. Bjergsen back in. He hits a Foxfire. Now going for another one. He's going to get a double kill. Bjergsen starts to pull the team back in the game as they control the fights together. The only thing that could have given TSM something. Are you kidding me? Link whiffs a Frozen Tomb on himself. That's what lost them the fight. As soon as he came out of that, they instantly killed him. TSM miraculously, one by one, somehow gets this fight, and they prolong this Woo. game. I can't believe they prolonged the fifth dragon as well. Twice a fight went down to that area, and TSM finally come out on top. They hang on for a little bit longer, but they are still very much behind. That's oh, yeah. just one dragon for TSM. They're trying to get some more global gold back here, but really, they should be focused on getting some vision around the Baron site. That's going to be the site of the next big battle. It's coming up yeah. in less than a minute, and CLG can easily move up there. They already have one pink ward in place. As long as they just move up that line into the red side jungle, TSM having to come into the fog of war and take another one of those scattered I mean, fights, it cannot go this way again. Watch this. Link, just alt a person, not yourself. He alts himself there, and then they kill him immediately. Santorin with the godlike knockup, not allowing him yeah. to Zonyas afterwards. That kind of triggers the fight, and then how do they get double lift here? He goes crazy. He's Valk's been doing in the wrong game. direction. I mean, everything 
The only misplays that Link and Double have made in this game were in the same fight. And I and they dumped a lot of their cooldowns and damage into Dyrus at the very beginning, too. They yeah. caught him out, Scion just soaking up so much from CLG, and he didn't even go down in the end. He was a beast. Right after that, we saw Team Solomid take bottom turret. Wild Turtle sprinted to top, got himself a BF Sword, now trying to finish up that Bloodthirster to stick with Double Lift in these fights. He's also got himself the Scimitar now, so he can get more Bjergsen. damage. And Bjergsen, once again, no, he gets out with Spear Rush. Xfinity is way too deep for the team to save him. Now Aphromoo's taking the damage, and he could go down. Oh, That's going to be worse. No. Styrus calls in the dinner bell. Going to feed on Link. Can anybody help him, though, and get to the back line? All the members of CLG are bleeding red right now, and they finally solidify the kills. Moving on to the oh, next turret. A are kill you coming in. Cyrus goes down, but does TSM have a wave or enough control to push any more off of this? They can do Baron. They have a smite, a support, and an 80 carry. Oh. This could even give them the control to come back. Maybe they can do Darren. Baron, 30 seconds on Zion, Link and Smithy still alive and running there with home go. Oh my goodness, TSM on the comeback path here. Smithy going in for the Miracle Steal though. Oh my gosh. They have the Vision Trine, Punch so they can first. see them. Ask questions later, this is gonna be big. They're gonna oh. turn onto Smithy, so they stall it for now. Link. Oh my god, no way, it's gonna happen. Their worst nightmare coming true. Wild Turtle's gonna get knocked out next. No, the Boomerang Blade comes out just as he can fire it off and they actually come up with the kill. But the Baron is still alive, so everyone is going to be rushing right back here. We're going to see some more deaths, more fighting over wards. Turtle oh no, oh no, oh no, and the teleport. Oh, oh the Turtle's going down. He killed Afro. Oh my gosh, no <laughs> way. Finally, one more goes down. It is a minute on the death timers now, so there are moves to be made, but people have to spawn first. Something about CLG versus TSM <laughs> creates situations like this. CLG up four dragons and a Baron buff and an inhibitor, and TSM is storming back right now, closing the gap, 3,000 gold lead, preventing the Baron, winning two team fights in a row now. It's going to put CLG on notice a little bit, all the pressure that they could be under. <laughs> and oh, to get himself an injury. To breathe. Whew, let's catch our breath. Half do, time. Half do time. Not, do not step away for a snack, though. This is. A <laughs> yeah. This is, will be uh, a short intermission. The thing, isn't this just the perfect story, though, for TSM to make oh the beginnings God. of their comeback with back-to-back -back team fights? Oh, my. Talking about yeah. the classic CLG versus TSM matchup, CLG, they played out the lane swap a bit better. They had better objective trading. And then once they, fi they had better ward control the entire game. And then once they finally get into the meat of it, on the brink let's of fifth dragon, <laughs> let's go, let's go ahead they actually, lose team fight. Let's take another look Get at that, that Baron fight. Let's see what actually happened here. Take a look as this pause goes underway because that was intense. And overall, that pickup by Turtle to go back and get the BF Sword played off huge here. So, jumping off the Baron was the right call by TSM. And then it was literally just trying to outplay each other. Link takes a bit too much damage for, for Zonyas, quite honestly. Mm -hmm. Allowing Wild Turtle to get him with that Boomerang Blade right away. I mean, it's such a high-pressure situation. I'd say another small misplay there by Link. Oh, and Wild Turtle, help. Wild Turtle completely Let's clutch count, here. Count how many crits he gets. Yeah. One, two, and the boomerang. So Ooh. that's all he need. Jeez. He had a normal attack, two crits, and a boomerang blade, I think. I'll take it. Yeah. And then Zon Spartan's like, can I do the bear? No. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> he does. He was on dig for a long he time. thought about it. And coast. Oh, jeez. Had to, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> I guess so. So, Dyrus, we'll get you guys an update on his technical issue as soon as we can. 40 minutes in right now. So, the longest CLG versus TSM game on record <sighs> was at that MOG in the 2013 season. It was one hour and 54 seconds long. That was the one that ended with the triple kill on the base and the minions killing TSM's Nexus. I'm going to go out on a limb and say we will not reach that mark. But we want to. I think to. you're right. <laughs> The, the way this game nice. is going, you can see the pace of this game is continually accelerating. It was such a low kill, strategic type game until the fifth dragon started forcing action. CLG finally took a fight, or TSM finally took a fight against yeah. CLG and were able to win one, but now the pace continues to accelerate. Every time that dragon is up, it's the risk of a fifth one. With a downed inhibitor on one side, if CLG gets another Baron, that's also the game. There's so many things going against TSM right now. And the thing in, in this situation, it was TSM that had no choices. They had to go 
base check. They had to go fight this fifth dragon. It was CLG with all the cards. They had ward coverage. They had dragon stacks. They had time on their hands. Mm -hmm. But TSM forced the issue, create the, enough chaos that they've clawed their way right back into it. And just thinking about the late game team compositions too, the Corky is falling off pretty hard. Mercurial Scimitar, no last whisper. He's not doing the Sorcerer Shoes magic damage build. Lissandra is the burst damage, but after that, not as much. The sustained damage that TSM has with this really farmed Wild Turtle Sivir now could potentially overtake CLG if they can hold on across these next Dragons and Barons. And Sivir is the champion that thrives in that chaos. All right, getting Dyrus all suited up. And it does look like we're going to be good to go on this one. He is back to working form. So we're still waiting for Aphromoo to come back here. Like Jat said, we're at 40 minutes, and a lot is going to be dictated by the next spawn of that dragon. It went down recently, so you're going to have to hold your breath until then. It may have to be about the Baron. Baron indeed. Ward's going down. Whoa, they just straight up started. Wild Turtle, because of the death timers, they can start this right away. This is smart by CLG, but it can be stolen. The carries of TSM are too far away. I oh. think TSM actually has to give this up. A 50-50 is still a very scary thing to put in the hands of any team, but it is 100%. CLGs, they take Baron. It's good to see they're not shook by what has just happened. They are not kind of sitting back and saying, oh man, we can't do anything. Yeah. They go straight for something. Aphromoo cutting off all options. Right. Not even the possibility for Santorin to jump in there. Nice knockback. I think it was smart of TSM to not go for the steal, though. Yeah. Uh, knowing that a Baron buff can end the game with a power minion. Well. If you give up that kill and you put yourself in the death chamber for 70 seconds, it would be the game. It, something TSM had no call against makes it an even better call by CLG. Now, the CLG call right now should be shove up mid to put pressure on this exposed inhibitor to prep for Dragon. Because Fifth Dragon yep. always is on the table. Every time it comes back up, the pressure never dies down in a game like this. Once you reach this point, that factor is always going to be there. So, CLG with the Baron buff. Can they create uh, an extra advantage up the mid lane? Well, they're, they're doing exactly what you want them to here, yeah. Kobe. But, I mean, what you do against a team with Baron buff is you try and fight them. TSM wanted that flank initiation. It all depends how much well, he poke Pierce he can get. Nar. Yeah, if they can wait out this, these 15 seconds, TSM might be able to find a fight. That is technically a very big play. Dyrus actually taking it with Nar. This should be a point they're backing off of. Only 15 seconds they have to wait, and then it could be very much theirs with a better advantage. Smithy is getting seen out on this, and they're going to go ahead and back. So TSM is definitely able to hold their own now as CLG approaches in these fights. 20 seconds on to Dragon. Get ready, everybody. It's going to get bloody. This has to be contested here. And Dyrus doing the same thing already to start this one out. Just walking in, trying to cause trouble. And Zion should not be able to build up his Rage Bar because he is exhausted from the last transformation. Yep. Gives TSM a pretty It'll big... It'll take a long time. And Division Control isn't really there from TSM because the Crab is distracting X Smithy. They're just giving up the Vision Control, but they do get the Speed Shrine. Oh, double. This is crazy right now, guys. Very interesting ring around the rosy at Dragon here. Doesn't look like either team wants the fight unless it's a 100% for sure initiation. So they're just going to dance it out. A little spread out here for CLG, but they can all close onto the fight very fast with the composition they put together. Now, you, we, we've been spending the entire game worrying about Vi plus Lissandra locking down Bjergsen, but Lustboy has a Banshee's Veil on his Annie with Flash ready. This Annie can single-handedly yep. lock up CLG long enough for Sivert to absolutely shred them. And they have everybody on the team. Charm lands! Oh, Talisman of Ascension, oh. the ultimate to go in. Nick Smithy flashes out. That actually does not kill him with the ult from Santorin, but he's still stuck in Cataclysm. Zion Spartan with a four-man ultimate, but he is now left alone. Where is the DPS coming from? Link now enters the fight. There's the Zanyas. Do they have the focus now to take him out? He still has the tomb to go down on. Already used it, actually, so he goes down. Double lift somehow in the middle of the fight again, and he goes down. Team Solo Mid has easily just put this in their favor. That's three kills, but nobody on TSM died. They might ignore the Dragon and try and win the game. They're going straight down the mid lane, Jet. Bottom lane is getting actually pinged out here. While Turtle may want to hit stop or do something. Yeah, hit the darn <laughs> turret. Need a D-man call on this one. That's going to go down. Now they're on the inhibitor. They also stop Fifth Dragon with this if they even have to go back for it. They have 40 seconds on three members to keep going for Nexus turrets if they want. 
This would be a miracle I think defense that's it. here. I don't think there's any way COD stops this one. They're trying to cut off the minions, but there's too many people on TSM. And Darius is too tanky. An absolutely amazing turn of events. Now CLG has one last ditch effort to go for broke. TSM is just too strong. They own CLG's base oh, here, seconds. but they don't have the minions. The Ten focus seconds. is on the CLG. They're doing that perfectly. Now to the Nexus. It's open. It's up to 50% after being down all game. Team Solo mid person. Fear and they take oh, down oh, Counter Magic God. Gaming. Coming back from the brink of five dragons. Down four dragons, down kills, down a baron, down an inhibitor, but not down the game. This is why we always bring up the playmaking ability of Bjergsen. They look to their star player, time time he again. finds the charm, and Lux Boy with the follow up. Also, Santorin dropping the Cataclysm and immediately flashing out, leaving yeah. Gnar in there. Zion had to flash to separate himself from CLG, even though he got his Gnar ultimate off. Too far away, no damage to follow up. Whoa. Some sighs of relief there. The fans approaching the stage to throw out high fives for the hard fought win from Team Solo Mid. And as Iris, just living in it. Such a such a comeback by TSM. Wow. But at the same time, such a hard pill to swallow for COG oh, and man. COG fans. They were on the brink of taking down TSM there. In strong fashion. In strong fashion. But honestly, some misplays by Link. And yeah. The, yeah. the tried and true Link performs and performs until the pressure's on. Under it's pressure. almost like the pressure fell off of him and he became too free in that one fight around Dragon for the fifth Dragon going in before necessary, alting himself, catching nothing, and then double if just fell off late game on Corky. Oh, we all know the results of this as well, the wager of pink hair. Oh no. Hot shot GG. Now have some pink hair. What a hard fought game on both sides. Eight and eight throughout the regular season in games <laughs> across the splits and now it's nine and eight tsm has the playoffs against clg but the regular season's games they now go in favor of tsm great game that was awesome Ooh. the hype the hype was matched i think it was matched. yeah everybody got the I game so not well the clg fans didn't get the game that they wanted but we got a game we absolutely they did got for a game. like the first 35 minutes <laughs> <laughs> so they have to everybody the, wins isn't that yeah. being a clg uh, fan though <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna go oh, send it God. down to freak who's riff side with team solo mids coach Thanks very much, Riff. What's up, guys? Loco Doco here with me, Victorious TSM in first place. So, first question I'm going to ask you: What was the last thing you said to your team at the end of champs, like before you walked off the stage? Um, I told them good luck. I t told them we had better picks, and we talked about level one. Well, it seems like the game went really poorly to start out, though. You said we've got better picks, a better level one, all this fun stuff. But CLG got you guys real close to losing the game. They got a Baron. They got four dragons. They got your middle inhibitor turret. What were you feeling throughout this game as the game slipping away from your team? Um, well, I was watching with Andy and Hotshot, and they were just being nervous, so I was taking them on, teasing them. <laughs> so teasing them. Well, looks like you got some more room to tease these guys. What, uh, what words do you have to say for uh, Hot Pink GG here? Well, Hotshot, your, team's, your team honestly looks really good, um, better than it has in, like, course of three seasons. Um, I, I feel like they played really, really well, maybe even a bit better than us, but our guys were really clutch at the end. Yeah, you guys certainly played really amazingly, of course, here at the top of the North American standings. Now, we know that this win gets you almost a guaranteed spot uh, for an invite to IEM Katowice. You'll have a chance to maybe play some of the best teams around the world, look like maybe SK Gaming, GE Tigers is going to be there. How's TSM stuck up internationally? Uh, well, you never know until you play them. I can say, like, we're going to win or Koreans are too good or whatever, <laughs> but you never really know until we play them because the regions, they don't play each other. And they'll study each other and they'll watch each other play, but until you play, you really don't know. What, what's your guess going to be, though? I know you watch the other regions. You've tried to coach your teams on preparing for the game shifting. What is your, your blind guess before you play them? How is it going to go? <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm making it hard for you. Um, <laughs> uh, let's say we'll do well. You guys are going to do well. Very diplomatic answer, Loco Doco. Guys, congratulations on first place right now. Thank you very much for your time. For now, they're going to throw it back to the guys in the caster desk.
Thank you very much, gentlemen, and some wise words there from Loco Doco. I was obviously glad to see that, you know, credit was given because CLG fought very hard there, and this is a team that has looked better than it ever has. There's always been respect, and there has been friendship between yeah. these two teams over the years as well. I mean, they mentioned in the beginning of the day, like, even Reggie and his brother Dan were su subbed in for CLG back in the day. Like, a yeah. lot of them have friendly relationships with each other, the players. And like Loco said, it was a very well-played game from both sides there. Like, CLG had advantages that entire time, and they were pushing them to the limit. Yeah. And TSM wasn't making big enough mistakes to just let those advantages lose the game for them. And it came down to a couple really close team fights, where, as he said right there, TSM was a little bit more clutch. It seems like when they need to be, they have the eye for those plays in the fight, right? Both teams had really good engages going into those fights, but even being behind, Bjergsen was able to find a way through, get the double lift, get another double kill, and getting him back in the game really started to set things up. The dragon fights were huge for TSM, and like we said, <laughs> stopping the fifth one is I thought that was going to be impossible everything else was uncontested I don't think we've seen a game just continuously yeah. be dictated by game five here in, or the definitely five a nail biter. <laughs> yeah, we knew five dragons you know it, it accelerates the game to end when they're on the brink there you usually think it's for the team that has the fifth dragon force oh they're gonna have to come fight us and we're gonna get them or they're gonna fight us and win the game like that's what happened there so to look at that game what did TSM do to actually have to come back? Or what did they do to come back? Because they were pressured. Well, as we said, they didn't have any choices. They had to rush over there. They had to force the fight, even though they didn't have the vision set up for it. And they made it happen. They pulled uh, CLG back into their jungle and opened up the opportunity for mistakes to be made. So yeah. we're now looking at Counter Logic Gaming's way that they played it. How would they have remedied pretty much the situation? Would that have been more wards? Would they have been able to pretty much get, as they did, full control of a top side and then activate something? Because it seemed like once they were starting to be pressured into things, they didn't do the ward setup. They didn't yeah. preemptively do things. It's a really hard game uh, for CLG to kind of go back and say what actually went wrong. Because for the first 35 minutes, they have a lot to take away from that and a, from a positive perspective. And the mistakes they made were kind yeah. of just blunders. It wasn't like, oh yeah, strategically we forgot to do this. It's just they got outplayed in a couple of late game team fights. And it's too bad that happened to CLG since they've really been priding themselves in their ability to outplay other teams. But it is just one game in the regular season and they need to take away that they're a good team. Absolutely. Actually, right now we're going to send it back to Freak who's standing by with CLG's veteran, AD Carey. Thanks very much, Rev. Yeah, I got double lift here. That was an incredible game you guys just played. And first things first, actually, you told me before we came on camera here that the game was closer than you expected. Can you tell me what your thoughts were coming into this match? Um, well, I definitely expected it to be a really good match, but because both of us are so good, I expected it to be really one-sided. And as soon as things started going wrong for us early game, I was like, damn, we're going to get stomped. Like, it's going to be really hard to come back because um, the way, like, the nature, I was just thinking about 80 matchups, like, the nature of Corky versus Sivir, it can get really, really bad if, like, Sivir can get to late game, which you saw later. But, yeah, overall, my, my thoughts on the game was, like, really apprehensive. I would lie if I, like, didn't say I wasn't super nervous going into the game because um, I care so much. And... Yeah, in the end, we just made a couple of bad calls and just threw the game. That sucked. Oh, well. That's <laughs> uh, too bad. You did tell me that you, were, you stopped being nervous once the game started, though. Does this, you just forget who you're against and just the game takes over at that point? Yeah, like uh, a couple of years ago, I stopped playing with name tags on, so I don't really, I never called people by their name in game. I always call the champion, so I don't, I don't really care who I'm playing against. It's mostly just the champions, and I don't know. I just, I guess I stopped being nervous on stage a while ago, just, just from experience, you know? But definitely before the game, I was shaking and Everyone's like telling me I have to win, so it just kind of sucks, like so much pressure. Well, unfortunately, you guys did collapse a little bit under pressure, but you still got more than half the season to go. Uh, so far, CLG, I do want to say, still looks very, very good. Lokodoku just gave you guys compliments, saying that you guys look the best you have since forever in the LCS. How are you feeling about CLG right now? Yeah, it's really fun to play on CLG again, which I couldn't honestly say for a really long time. It was a pretty terrible environment to play in, and just I didn't... Uh, really enjoy playing with the team until this uh, iteration of the roster and man it's so much fun like you see like finally we have a top laner who's like willing to get in there and make real plays like Zion he can carry games just like straight up and just make like really good initiations happen um, I just really like everyone on the team and the atmosphere is so much better and I, I do agree with Loco this is the best CLG's look for a really long time and I'm just glad like the game was at least close you know like we didn't get stomped and um, I don't know I, I think that losing this game is like, even though we got dethroned from first place or whatever, it doesn't necessarily mean that um, 
we can't just bounce back first place at the end of the split. Yeah, I definitely think you guys can. Double thank you very much. We'll see you guys playing TSM later on in the year, and then we'll see you in playoffs most likely. Thanks for your time. For now, we're going to throw it to the guys at the analyst desk to break down that game and get an interview. Thank you, Freak. I want to welcome Dyrus and Bjergsen to the desk after a pretty sweet comeback victory there. Very tense, to say the least, coming in at the end of the game there. Dyrus, I got to speak to you coming into this matchup uh, a week ago, and I know how strongly you feel about the rivalry and the matchup itself, so tell me how it feels to come away with that victory. Um, it was insane, because going into the match, I see all this hype, and I see all this stuff, and I just really, really, really want to beat them. I'm like, screw these guys, but then after beating them, Every time we've beat them, I actually feel bad for them because this time around I felt like they were actually the better team, but we just performed better on stage. Uh, well, kind words for you there, definitely. That has to make it sweeter, though, knowing that the rivalry and the team play by both sides is at one of its all-time highest. Uh, Bjergsen, when there is so much hype around matches like this, and we spoke to Reginald and Hotshot earlier in the day, and we asked them how they prepared you guys for it, you know, when, when the game actually then lives up to that hype and it is as intense as it is, how do you keep your cool, especially being a shot caller? Um, it's obviously really hard, especially when you get behind in the early game. Like, you really don't want to lose a match that is this hype and matters so much. Like, no one wants to have pink hair, obviously, but um, I think it just comes with experience. Like, we've all lost a lot of games. We've all lost a lot of games, like, on the competitive stage. And you just learn to kind of keep your head cool because you realize it is really important as it show this game. It's just super important to keep your head cool. Well, let's be honest. You're not at least a little excited to see Reginald with pink hair now? Uh, I definitely would have been. <laughs> and uh, I don't know. I would, or, I would sorry, Hotshot, rather. Sorry, Hot well, Shot I would rather. love to see Reggie, but Hotshot's going to be pretty funny. That'll be, that'll to be, be honest, I, I would have rather had Reggie with pink hair because it would yeah. be fi funnier. But well, you had every it's... opportunity to throw the game to Iris. <laughs> uh, so anyway, I want to get into you know, how you guys actually came away with this win because, again, it was, as you said, uh, you know, you were down early in the game and you had a couple great team fights and outplays near the end of the game that really pulled it together for you guys. So I want to go into our first replay, which is 38 minutes into the game. It's in the mid lane. And Dyrus, I want you to walk us through this one. So we're going to pull it up on your screen. It's the first engagement. Bjergsen gets caught out just a little bit, but manages to survive it. So, you know, uh, Dyrus, walk me through the decision to turn on this, knowing that you guys can take the fight. So looking here, I thought Bjergsen was going to insta-die, and then he said he was going to flash, and he got out. And I was like, oh, he got out. We can, we can still win. Because at this point, I thought we were losing. So right here, I thought Bjergsen was going to insta-die. Somehow he flashes out. Like, Link barely missed that, and now the fight's good for us. Because now we can just hit Smithy, and Zion's, like, on me. He's not really going on Turtle because he can't. And then our, our positioning is just, I don't know, like spread out and then I kind of like go in on their back line and then they're on Zion so it's tank for tank right now Double's kind of choosing between uh, me or our front he wanted to kill Bjergsen because he's the biggest threat on our team but then we have turtle also then right here at the end you don't you don't see it but I just die and then it makes the game even closer <laughs> right well yeah soon after that there was the whole Baron fiasco for about like four minutes where the teams are just trading kills while turtle had some pretty stellar uh, outplays there individually. Um, Bjergsen, the, uh, the mid lane was a huge matchup here, and we spoke about it a lot going into the matchup, just between you and Link being two top performers in the mid lane. Um, and there has been so much discussion about things falling on your shoulders. How do you feel that matchup in this game played out uh, between you and Link specifically? Um, I think it played out pretty evenly. Uh, we put some jungle pressure early, and then when Vi got the level 6, they put in a lot of jungle pressure. So I think it was just a fairly, the matchup is very even, and we both have very even amount of jungle and support distribution when we come in and help. So I think it was just a pretty even lane overall. Not really too much action, and it was really just about the team fights. Now, uh, one other small thing about champions just is the fact that Lissandra coming into this game was 100% win rate in the LCS, 10 and 0. You guys handed Lissandra her first loss. So going into champions like though, and I'm sure you guys have some idea of the statistics that roll around yeah. champion picks, why were you so comfortable handing over a champion like that? Um, it's mostly just that we get the trade-off. We get Ari, which is obviously also a really, really strong champion on this patch. So we feel like Ari is definitely at the same level of Lissandra. 
And we also got Sivir, which Lissandra has a really hard time killing because she has a spell shield, she has a movement speed. So Lissandra goes in and we can just kite back using the movement speed. Then once we re-engage, Lissandra can't really do too much. So we just tried to play around that and I think it really brought us a lot of wins in team fights. And so that brings Lissandra to 11 and 1. Dyrus, you have something you would like to add to that? Um, so I felt like the picks were still really even, but what's, what really, really brought us to the end of the game was deciding when to go in. For example, at Baron, we could have went in, you know, suicide at Centaur and maybe have gotten Baron, but then we didn't do that. We could have went in on Dragon at one time when it was like, there was a bunch of bad times we could have went in where we usually would have went in and lost. But I think our tolerance and, you know, Bjergsen calls to like draw out towards the end of the game really, really brought us in. I do want to look at our second replay then because it's specifically, I want to get uh, your thoughts, Bjergsen, on where the calls came from. We're going to pull the final fight of the game up because this was a very intense moment around the fifth dragon, knowing that you guys couldn't give it up. Uh, walk me through as the shot caller where the decision came from to initiate when you did. Um, we know Lissandra is off on the bottom side and I get the charm on Xmithy, which just pretty much the fight just explodes after that. We have a good position where Lissandra is off to the side, she can't kill anyone, and Turtle and I can just do as much free damage as possible. Sure, Nar gets the engage off, but Lissandra is so far away, it doesn't matter. She's getting zoned by uh, by Annie, so we're not really too scared of anything here, and Sivir at this point does a lot more damage than Corky, especially since Corky went for the QSS upgrade, the Scimitar. So at this point, our team fighting is just superior through comps, and we knew Lissandra wouldn't be able to do as much damage to us. Double lift over chases a little bit. We get CCs on him and clean up the fight. Fabulously played out fight there. You guys are able to run down the mid lane, you know, ward off the two defenders, take the victory. Dyrus, the fans have obviously played a big role in the rivalry and in TSM as an organization growing and evolving throughout the years. What do you have to say to them and how much does it mean to have them behind you in times like this? So on behalf of TSM and everyone behind our organization, to all of you guys, the fans. Um, we couldn't have done it without you. Every time you guys chant, every time you make that one sign, for example, at PAX, like just one sign saying TSM, like it, it's not only on like winning for ourselves, but it makes me play better wanting to win for you guys. And it becomes really, really personal in that kind of matter. And I just want to win for you guys and make you guys happy, make my teammates happy. And um, thank you very much. Well, this game lived up to the hype in all regards and a huge congratulations on a hard fought victory for you guys in securing that first place slot. Congratulations again. Thank you for joining me here on the desk. We've got to take a quick break, but after these messages, we'll head back into the action with Gravity versus Team Liquid. Stay with us. The NALCS continues after this. The Let's do it, boys. Yeah, boys. Holy shit, what was that? Drop my notebook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, wow. Almost getting out of this oh, with a boomerang just on the edge. Charge. He does. Double lift way too close to the fight. TSM turns back hard. I'm going. Nice. Don't hold the sub. Nice. 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 Alright, Corky and Vi still alive. You guys need to kite them. We're fine. Can we go on this? Yeah, yeah, I wanna, I wanna walk, walk up, walk up, walk up. Science up, science up, science up. Science up. I'm going on this? Yeah, go, 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 go. Get him, get him, get him. What the hell? I can't move. I'm keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep going, keep going. Turtle, 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 turtle. This could be the comeback here for Team Solo Mid. The ult goes in. That's onto Santorin. He's pretty tanky from the Vi Assault and Battery, so he stays alive. They continue to fight. This is going to be big. They're going to oh. turn on Nuke's Mini, so they stall it for now. Lee. Oh Bye. my god, no way it's going to happen. Their worst nightmare coming true. Wild Turtle's going to get knocked out next. No, the Boomerang Blade comes out just as he can fire it off. TSM is just too strong. They own CLG's base here, seconds. but they don't have the minions. The Ten focus seconds. is on the CLG. They're doing that perfectly. Perfectly. Now to the Nexus after being down all game. Team Solo mid persevere.